We're here at AC Precision just outside of Oxford and we're standing in front of the Matsura MX330 machine. I'm here to quiz Paul as to why we're seeing so many of these in the market. Yeah, this machine, I mean, you're right, we're seeing a lot of them and it's not just here. This is their first Matsura machine and they've got a lot of other brands in the machine shop. But I think the reason from talking to the guys here is down to the automation. You see what you've got to your right there is a 10 pallet station which enables them to run this machine unmanned. Uh, not just unmanned during the day but unmanned most importantly overnight as well. And I know their preference was not to have a third party. They like the fact that this is part of the original machine. Yeah, I think that that's a big factor. I think when people embrace technology, they sometimes don't want to opt for two separate technologies and bolt them together, understandably. Yeah. Um, and this isn't that, of course. This is one integrated solution. But with that as well, you get the benefit that it's a very small footprint. So if you look at this machine, I know Tony here at AC Precision has got quite a lot of space in his machine shop since he moved, but he still wants to make sure he he gets a machine as small as possible because he might want to fit more in. Exactly. What ultimately is the USB here for? I think the biggest thing here is that the uh, the Matsura machine is a, is a Japanese built machine. Um, you know, whether the automation is important or not, take that out of the equation for a minute. You've got here a, you know, a premium five axis machine tool. One here that is cutting um, all kinds of materials to very tight tolerances. And in fact, that's one of the areas that Tony was quite key to put across to me was the fact that they're now machining in canals uh, for the motorsport industry. They're not temperature controlled in here as well, which we can feel it's actually quite a warm day. And I think with machines like this, you sometimes think to yourself, okay, well, are we gonna see growth if you've not got temperature controlled in here? And if we do, are we gonna you know, see an effect on the accuracy of the part? And again, Tony said that actually this is producing to tolerance um, every time. So, but going back to having the automation, what's it done for his business and his customers? I think the interesting point was that he said that he's able to now cost jobs, uh, quote jobs at lower costs, because he's obviously now more efficient. I think again, um, we talk about efficiency of a machining center. You might be running a machining center, if you're lucky, at around about 35% efficiency, which means that spindle's going for just 35% of the time. Now that's understandable, that's not a problem. Well, it is a problem, but it's not a problem because you've got to load a machine, you've got to change tools, you've got to measure components, so you accept that. But when you opt for something like this, what happens is all of that goes out, out of the equation. And suddenly this machine now, for him, is well over 90% efficient. And that means that this spindle is running for over 90% of the time. All of the operator's intervention is done, you know, where you're standing Outside, there. Outside, whilst it's running. Ultimately, what parts are they making here? I know they're diversifying in terms of materials, but what sizes are going on to machines like this? Well, that's what's done for this. That's what uh, this machine has done for them as well. It's meant that from going from predominantly a motorsport machining environment, which is a pretty cutthroat, um, you know, challenging business to, to be in, he's now been able to actually go to different sectors and different markets and say, yeah. well, look, you know, we've got a machine tool here that, that we can machine accurately overnight and un unmanned. So it's, it's enabled him to expand his offering, as I know you spoke to Andy earlier, um, and it's enabled him to, to quote parts at, at, le at lower prices. And that's gonna make their customers happy. I know throughout the, the whole time of COVID as well, they have still grown this company, and thanks to this machine. And some of the, some of the other aspects that they talk about is the fact you've got 90 tools on here, so yep. you can actually have you know, different jobs on this, on this pallet, or you can, have, you can have 10 different components here, you've got enough tools to accommodate those parts. So you know, it, it's, it really has been a compelling purchase for them. And at the moment, you've got the uh, Sybil scheme, which is the coronavirus business Loan interruption, scheme. loan interruption scheme and it's all about how the government are helping to subsidize the interest on the first year which in turn then helps the interest across the whole repayment process there's a lot of finance deals attached to that as well but i know matt Sora know a lot about it i, I, I guess it's a bit like you know when you're buying a home at the moment and they're kind of taking away the stamp duty uh, yes yeah, so if you put your entrepreneurial head on and you you want technology like this you want to compete in the same way that ac precision have you get funding, far more flexible funding using this scheme without some of the constraints that you might normally find going through a traditional lending uh, solution. But it does finish on the 30th of September, so really there's never been a better time to buy.